Here we go. Here's the magic, guys. You ready for the magic? I coded it to work with the actual printer. <laughs> Last year at TwitchCon, I got to show off this Game Boy camera widget in front of a ton of people, and it was an amazing experience. They had a PTZ camera at the venue that pointed at different parts of the expo hall, and they even gave me access to that camera to hook up to the Game Boy camera widget. The way the widget works is you guys can activate a Twitch channel point reward, and an animation of a Game Boy will pop up and take a photo. But I wanted to add two extra features to really set this apart. First, it also uploads that photo to my Discord server so that my community can check them out later. But you know how the original Game Boy had a printer attachment that you can get that could physically print out the photos? So I also hooked up the widget to a physical thermal printer which prints the photos as well. I really went through obsessive lengths to make this as true to the original Game Boy camera as possible. It even uses the same sounds and prints the same camera borders that you'd see on an actual Game Boy camera. Yes, that is me spreading my ass cheeks. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I made this widget and hopefully this can serve as some sort of inspiration for something that you're making for your stream. Just. Please don't tell Nintendo because I can't afford a lawsuit. If you're just here to download the widget, I have made it available up on my Patreon. There's a separate installation video and detailed PDF instructions for everything that you're gonna need. So if you want it, then pay up, okay? It isn't free. It's 10 bucks and you also get access to over a dozen other widgets I've made for streamers. So if you think I'm just in this for the money, then I got good news for you because this video is sponsored by VIP SCD keys. If you've been paying full price for Windows, don't do that. That's cringe, okay? You can get 30% off a Windows 11 Pro license, bringing the price down to $21. Just make sure to use code NUTTY at checkout to get that 30% off. And if you wanna save a little bit more money, you can just get a Windows 10 key and then upgrade those keys to Windows 11. And that only costs you $15. VIP SCD keys supports secure payment methods like PayPal and it's very fast, you just pay for it and they will instantly send you an activation code, which you can then just put into your Windows settings and then you're done, it's easy. Check out VIP SCD keys in the link down below and thank you for sponsoring this video. So to get started making this widget, we're gonna need some graphics and sound effects. And since the goal is to be as authentic to the original Game Boy camera as possible, I went out and bought a Game Boy camera. The Game Boy camera isn't just a camera for your Game Boy. This is Nintendo, so they've got all of these fancy bouncy animations and all these quirky little design elements. And I wanted to replicate the same feeling on my stream. So I bought this blue one off eBay for like 70 bucks and then I plugged it in to the analog pocket. So this is sort of like a modernized Game Boy, but it takes real cartridges so I can actually plug it in and play with it. And this allowed me not only to study how the UI works and then straight up rip off Nintendo, but I was also able to get some clean screenshots of the UI, like the border that gets added to all your photos, the like little three, two, one countdown, or when you press A and then the print label comes up and then the print label is like shaking. I wanted to recreate all of that. I also used Audacity to get a clean recording of some of the sounds that the Game Boy camera makes, like when you press the A button or when you save a photo. But more importantly, having a real Game Boy camera allowed me to take a good picture of me actually holding the Game Boy camera so that we could use it as the base for our widget. So I plugged the Game Boy camera into my original Game Boy, then I threw it into Affinity Designer and cut out the shape so that we could use it in OBS later. Anytime I make a new widget in OBS, I always start by making a brand new scene to work in. The idea is that if you assemble everything in one place, later on you could just nest that scene into your other scenes, like your just chatting scene, gameplay scene, BRB scene, all as if it was just one source in OBS. So it makes it way easier to work with. Nested scenes are just when you put a scene inside another scene in OBS. If you didn't know you could do that before, well, get used to it because we are gonna be using a lot of them here. So I started by adding the Game Boy camera image that we made earlier into the base widget scene. And the image has a cutout in the middle where the screen is supposed to go so that we can put our camera underneath it later. Then I made another nested scene 
Inside of that base scene, which holds all of the screen elements like the UI and our camera. And in order to make our camera look like an actual Game Boy camera, I used my special blend of OBS filters. So I started by adding a pixel art filter. So this is a plugin for OBS that allowed me to add some pixelation and dithering. Then I added a basic color correction filter and turned the saturation all the way down to make it black and white. And this is already looking pretty good, but it looks weird because my camera runs at 60 FPS and the Game Boy camera runs at like five. So I use the freeze plugin for OBS, which allows me to artificially lower the frame rate of my camera to match that stuttery mess from the original Game Boy camera. The original Game Boy also isn't black and white. It's got this weird, gross pea yellow soup color. So I fixed that by adding yet another color correction filter, adjusted the color multiply and color add, and now we're getting something. This looks really good. So we've replicated the look of the Game Boy camera, but it's not a camera until it takes photos. So next, I moved on to the animations. And for this, we of course use the Move plugin for OBS. With this plugin, I'm able to animate sources and move them around to predefined positions on the screen simply by toggling on and off filters. And so what I did was I added two Move Source filters. One of them positions the camera off screen. The other one positions it right in the center of the screen. And then I added a third one to position it in the corner of the screen. And so to animate our widget, you just have to make a gigantic multi-action in something like a stream deck to toggle on and off those filters in the exact timings that you want. Now, I opted to use StreamerBot because you can do more stuff in StreamerBot, and I did also use C Sharp code. Now, don't be confused here. If you don't know anything about code, you could just as easily do this using like the normal StreamerBot sub actions. I mean, if you look at my code, all it's really doing is turning on and off filters with some delays in between them. So you could just do that using the normal UI or even on a stream deck. In the multi-action, you'll also see that I'm turning on and off these three, two, one image sources that we grabbed earlier. I just dropped them into OBS and used our streamer bot multi-action to show and hide these images along with some sound effects and that shaking print button when you press the A button. I then added a second freeze filter to the multi-action to freeze my camera at the exact moment when the photo was taken. And there's also one one line of code in there to tell OBS to take a snapshot of my camera and save it for later. For this, I actually made a third nested scene and then took a screenshot of that instead of our screen scene. And the reason for this is because I wanted the screenshot to use a different frame and be black and white instead of that pea yellow soup color. So in the end, we're left with our final animation, which pops up the Game Boy camera, freezes the camera, takes a screenshot, and leaves behind a PNG file, which we can then upload to Discord. I wanted everything to be fully automatic. I don't wanna to have to drag the screenshot into Discord myself, otherwise I'll never do it. So the good thing is StreamerBot makes this really easy. There's actually a built-in sub action that allows you to pick any text channel in your Discord server and then upload any file from your computer. And since our multi-action is already saving our Game Boy camera photos as PNG files, we just have to tell StreamerBot to upload it. All you have to do is create a webhook URL in your Discord server, which is super easy to do, feed it into StreamerBot so it knows which channel to upload the photo to, select the photo, and then you're done. And the multi-action we created is just overwriting the same photo on every screenshot. So it's gonna look like it's uploading a new photo every time, even though it's just pointing to the same file. But there was one thing left to do to really sell this effect. The original Game Boy had a printer attachment that you could buy to physically print out your Game Boy camera photos. And it was a non-negotiable for me. I needed to have that part in my stream. And the good thing is I already have a thermal printer and I already have it set up to print every time I get a new sub. I already have a video on that if you're interested in setting up a sub printer for your own stream. Go watch that, it's totally free. I swear this isn't some ploy to get you to buy more shit on my Patreon. You can actually set that up for free. In order to connect the printer to our widget, there's two steps. First, I created a super simple HTML template that just shows the timestamp of the photo and the photo. Then I used a command line tool called 
What it's a mole top diff? To convert that HTML file into a PDF file. And then finally, I used a second tool called PDF top printer to send that PDF to the printer. And since these are both command line tools, it's super convenient because then I could just use the C sharp functionality of StreamerBot to automate the whole process and add the printing functionality to the big multi action. And with that, our Game Boy camera widget is finally complete. All that's left to do is create a new channel point reward on Twitch, hook that up as a trigger to our big multi action that we made earlier, and then let StreamerBot do the rest. There are some finer details I ended up changing in the end. One of them is I used another OBS plugin called Downstream Cure, and this is a super cool plugin. We'll do a video on it next week, but basically, instead of nesting that widget scene in all of our other scenes, you can make it a global source, so it's a part of all of your other scenes. And that means you don't have to manually add it one by one to your just chatting scene, into your gaming scene, into your BRB scene, into your, um, what, what, you know, I, your, I don't know what the fuck you do with your streams. And I also combined the move plugin with the composite blur plugin. So you'll notice that when the camera pops up, everything yep. behind the camera goes blurry, sort of like a shallow depth of field effect. I can't be bothered explaining how this is done because this video is like super long and I don't know if anyone is watching anymore. But there you have it. I hope you guys understood something from this video. This was very much a step to draw the rest of the owl video. Uh, come watch my Twitch stream. We make cool stuff like this all the time. And maybe if you watch long enough, you'll get enough channel points to be able to trigger the Game Boy camera. So um, if you made it this far in this video, that means you either liked it or like you fell asleep and then YouTube is like auto playing a bunch of videos and then my video just came up next. Um, come check me out on Patreon. I'll have more widgets available for you guys coming soon. And if you want to add this to your stream, it's just $10 a month, but you only have to pay for the first month and then you can cancel. Um, thanks guys. Uh, see you, uh, I guess. <laughs>